Hi, I'm Nicole Gagner coming to you from my studio in Bismarck, North Dakota again. And today I want to share with you another art lesson that you can do from home, hopefully with things that you have around the house. Um, so I am going to be making kind of my own paint. Um, this requires a lot of experimentation and a little bit of that attitude of just see what happens. Not every single one is going to come out Definitely not how you expect, but also they might not come out um, exactly perfectly like paint. There's a reason that uh, we've been making paints. Uh, paints have been tested to be the exact color that they're supposed to be. They've been uh, tested not to fade over time, but that doesn't mean that you can't find fun materials around the house that you could make art with and um, maybe it'll turn out great and maybe you'll learn something from it. And if not, maybe it'll just be a fun way to spend an afternoon and make some art. So I hope you can go into it with that attitude of um, a little bit of mad scientist, a little bit of experimentation, and hopefully uh, really have some fun with it. And maybe you uh, will get a beautiful painting out of it too. So um, with that in mind, the things that I looked for when I went around my house were um, things that are colorful and maybe would stain. So, uh, one thing that I grabbed out of my spice cabinet was called, it's called turmeric. Um, I might be pronouncing that wrong. I'm not a chef. I'm not an expert in these things. I just know that I cook with it. It tastes great, but also look at that gorgeous color. So this one I just mixed up with a little bit of warm water and let it sit for a long time. Other ones that you can do if you have colorful teas around the house. Um, I will warn you that green tea, despite the name, will not turn out green. Um, green is actually a tough color. You'll notice even if you uh, grind up leaves, um, boil spinach, things like that, things that will make these really pretty colorful greens, they might not stay green over time, but that's okay. We'll just experiment with these. Um, spoiler, I'm gonna show you, but I had a bunch of pink teas for some reason and only one of them actually stayed pink at the end. The other two made beautiful colors, but they didn't look exactly like how they looked when they started. And look, so like I said, that's part of the fun. Um, so I will switch to my other camera now so that you can see what I've gathered up, but you might wanna take this time to pause, uh, look around your house to see what you could use for some pretty colors. And um, if you can add hot water to them, go ahead and do that. If you can put them in little cups or bowls and let them sit overnight, that can work also. Um, entirely up to you how you let them steep how you let how you let these colors come together so I will switch cameras right now all right so now that I've switched the camera you can see like I said I'm kind of being a little mad scientisty here um, you will still need some water for your brushes uh, you can see I've been painting a little bit here with mine um, I should not have had my brush sitting in that water there that was a bad example sorry when you let your brush sit in the water it's bad for your brush and it's a tipping hazard so Lots of reasons not to do it, learn from my mistakes. Um, so the things that I've gathered up here, like I said, there's a couple different types of teas. Um, this one was a loose leaf tea. You can steep those kind of like normal. You wanna make them a little bit extra strong and you can strain them if you want. I didn't mind the bits floating in it. You can see this uh, coffee that I brewed up still has a lot of the grounds in it. I just let them steep in there, but if you don't like the, the grounds in your finished painting, you can um, strain those out just like normal with a coffee uh, filter, anything like that. I've also got a little palette here. If you have this, you can use this to uh, mix up your colors. Say if I want a little bit of this pomegranate tea here, but I want the option of it being a little bit lighter, uh, you should add some clean water. Mine might be a little bit too dirty for this, but just for uh, the sake of showing you, you can actually pull this here and have a lighter version of it right next to it. Or maybe if you even wanna mix some other colors up. Remember anytime you switch colors, even with our homemade colors like this, you want to uh, clean your brush in between. So maybe I'll bring in some of my turmeric over here and then I'll wash my brush and I can mix a couple of these together and see what happens when I mix those together. But before we get too far into that, I will show you what I have um, swatched out here. Um, so I, a lot of times when I'm using new paints, I'll do this also. I'll draw a little square and write the name of the paint on it. Here, these are my homemade paints. So I have my coffee, my tea. Um, you can see here I had one that was called Twisted Black Tea. 
that's over here. It's actually pretty pink. So I was surprised when I brewed it um, that this black tea was so purpley. Um, and then I was even more surprised to find out that it dried to almost a perfect Payne's gray there. Really pretty color, not what I was expecting, but a very fun color to use in my painting. Um, I've also got this pomegranate green tea here, um, which that one, again, was a really pinky purpley color when I brewed it. Um, so I was really surprised to see how uh, much of a light blue that this one turned out to be. Um, my blueberry tea though turned was nice and pink in my uh, brewing and that actually stayed nice and pink on my paper. So that was a fun thing to find. Um, I've got my turmeric here, got a little bit of espresso. So that was a little bit stronger and actually my best brown was from um, English breakfast tea, but depending on what you find in your cabinets, what you experiment around with, your experiences might be completely different. Uh, that's why swatching can be so great. You might not know exactly what you've got until you get it on the paper. Um, I did do my swatch on nice 140 pound watercolor paper. That's what I always look for when I am looking for paper to paint on. But that doesn't mean that you can't do a painting if you don't have watercolor paper. It's just my preference. If you have it, use it. If not, just use what you have. Um, I'll show you a couple different experiments that I did here. I'll move these over. Sorry about my squeaky chair there. Um, so if you've got cardstock, cardstock can be a pretty decent substitute. It's a little bit heavier than computer paper, um, but it's not quite as heavy with wa as watercolor paper. So the thing you want to be careful with is anytime you are using these really wet... Sorry, I'm trying to get it in the camera. There, there we go. Um, anytime you're using these really wet techniques on paper that's not designed to get wet, it can uh, kind of hurt the integrity of your paper. Um, so you can see I didn't get too wet with it still, but it still got a little bit wavy there. Um, if you get really, really wet with it and you're doing a lot of um, rubbing the paper with your brush, it's called scrubbing. If you scrub your paper too much, you might get some pilling. Um, you could even rip your paper. So if you are using cardstock, or even if you're using regular uh, printer paper, here's one that I did with just uh, the paper from my printer. You can see it did get quite a bit more bubbly than my watercolor paper or even my cardstock. Um, but as long as you're careful not to rip it, you can get a decent painting on this. And then what I would recommend is to um, let it completely dry and then put a really heavy book on top of it. Um, it might still be a little bit, you know, wavy from where the water was, but then at least you can uh, flatten it out afterwards. So this can be great to use for um, especially some of those experiments. Um, one thing that I actually love using um, printer paper for is test paper. So I'll have it off to the side when I'm doing any normal watercolor. Um, and then I'll use those test papers actually for collage later. So the um, textures and kind of waviness that you get out of it are not an issue once you rip it all up and glue it later. So you can do a lot of experimentation on whatever kind of paper you have and then maybe use that for collage paper later. Um, another thing that you can do if you've got some white cardboard around the house, um, you could try painting on that also. Um, really the cardboard is brown. Here, let me flip this. It's brown on the inside and then it's got a white paper coating over the top of it. So all of the same rules for the other paper applies in that you don't want to get it too soaked. You don't want to scrub too hard. Um, but you can definitely play around on this um, and paint a little bit and just see what happens. And this could be another one um, that could be really fun to let it dry and then maybe use uh, for something mixed media later, maybe come over with markers or um, you know other art materials and see what you could do on top of that. So that could be really fun too. Okay, so you can see I've been kind of painting here for a while this is definitely going to look different once it's dry but i want to point out something here if you start getting a little puddle of water one thing you, you can do is carefully dab it up um this is actually a technique called lifting because you'll notice when i dab it up with my paper towel it's going to lift some of that color with it um, so if you have anything that's getting a little bit too dark you can dab it with the paper towel um, one thing you can also do is let it dry a little bit and then build up more color by painting on top of it because once you get things that are a little bit too wet, like I can't really get any distinct lines in here where it's really, really wet now. So I would recommend sometimes um, setting it aside, starting a new painting, and then maybe coming back and finishing 
that one up after you've had a chance to kind of play around with some other stuff maybe get a fresh perspective on it that can always be a good thing all right and that's all for me um I would love to see what you could come up with for this like I said it's not um just these teas or spices but really anything could be turned into art um so please show me what you've done I would love to see it um, and one last thank you to the North Dakota Council on the Arts for their support in all of this. Um, and make sure that you show me what you've done and keep making art and I'll keep sharing new ways for you to make art at home too. Thanks.